it wasn't uh, just a bit a short note. It wasn't clear to me when I was uh, signed to this one how much time I would have. So I basically, I have forty-five minute slides. So I will cut off the the last slide that is basically a step-by-step -step migration from MySQL to MariaDB. The slides will be available so you can get those. But we will be able to try, to try to get through as much as possible. So here's what I'm talking about. I will assume that uh, you all can read even back there. Georg, can you read? I mean, can you read the slides? And uh, this, this is the <laughs> This may be a little bit too too small, so we we'll go through through uh, this one. So why uh, why to migrate to MariaDB? Uh, so I'm in this case I'm talking about uh, MySQL uh, and any closed source uh, uh, databases. So we are full open source. We are not only uh, releasing everything open source, but all the processes are open in Jira. Uh, we do document uh, discussion. In Sulib, we actually should do more discussion in Sulib, and I will try to see if we can move all technical discussion from Sulib to make it easier for community to participate. But uh, in principle, it is easy to do uh, uh, additions to MariaDB, even if you are not employed by the company, as easy would be employed. It's quite easy to find somebody who can help you, like a Google Summer Code student. So, so uh, MariaDB, we are you know, all major OSIS produced US distributions, so, which are not where well, you can find commercial databases, and that also makes it very easy to adapt an open source database. But we also work on most hardware and, and operating system, including Windows, which not every, uh, all databases do. And I, I personally take great pride of uh, trying to ensure that MariaDB is ready to upgrade for any version, directly to any version. Which, for example, look at MySQL, they recommend that if you still are using 5.1, which actually a lot of people still do in the cloud. If you want to migrate from MySQL 5.1 to 8.0, you have to go, go through all the other releases, of which most have in your life. So that would be it's more personal help for somebody to try to do. A connector for my programming languages uh, and uh, support encryption of address, which not everybody still do. But we also try to keep things, keep things compatible so that uh, if you have an uh, old archive of uh, from MySQL or MariaDB time, in most cases you can still access it today. If you were looking at the first MySQL version, we had uh, some storage engine that, that doesn't exist today. Uh, but you can still, in principle, quite easily add those to MariaDB code. The storage engine interface hasn't changed much. So you, just, just, you should still be able to access any version of data. For the current support engines, we will do everything we can to make things forward compatible. And uh, MariaDB is different. Uh, even with Postgres. Postgres is an excellent database, but if you want to have 20,000 connections actively uh, connected to the server, Postgres can't do that because it's process-based and uh, so each connection takes massively amount more memory than with the threads. And also that the, the, if you also are concerned about uh, a green word, I want to have a, a server who uses less energy by query that also MariaDB, just because threads is more efficient and process. We have a trade pool and it's here because uh, MySQL used to have, have it, they moved that to turn it to the enterprise server version in Oracle Cloud, and that makes it that if you have really high concurrency with, with uh, lots of users, you can use a trade pool to get much better performance because uh, most of that time is spent by doing context switches when you have lots of concurrent things, and the trade pool avoids all of those. We are probably the best reputation support of any database today. We can do things that, uh, we can do rings, we can do stars, things that other databases can't even dream about. We can have different engines on the slave. For example, we could have a column store for one table on the slave, 
in a DB on the master. So we could do things that makes MariaDB adopted for solutions that you can, can do with Hurama. We have system version of tables. You don't find that in any other database, open source database that I know of. Oracle has that. We have it. DB2 have it, but I don't know that many other ones who has that. And then the nice thing with that is that you can look at data, how your database looked far back, even 10 years if you just have the space. So you can see that. So how many, which employees did we have 10 years ago? And compare that to now. It's really powerful feature. And as disks get cheaper and cheaper, this feature will be just much more useful. And uh, for a commercial company looking to which database should we use in open source, there's lots of open source databases. Uh, in China, there is uh, 270 different companies having their own database. Most of those are derived from MySQL, Postgres, and MariaDB, more or less in that order. But also, it's very few companies who actually can ensure that they can fix any bugs and provide any kind of support to the database. If you go look at the Postgres word, you know, the open source Postgres, basically nobody can do that. Enterprise DB, we can do that, but they only do that on the closed source version of, of Postgres. Do you really have want to guarantee support in open source? MariaDB is probably one of the best choice. <laughs> okay, so let's go to, to migrations. We know when we, everybody has seen that MariaDB is the only choice if they're in open source. So the goal is that uh, when we do a migration from commercial database like Oracle or SQL Server, is that you shouldn't have to change anything in your application. Doesn't mean that we already reached the goal, but we will do everything we can to reach that goal. And that also means that we have to do things differently than the all other migration projects that exist and, and companies who basically, say if you want to go from Oracle, they start by converting all your open, uh, your build SQL modules and replacing package with some other code. And usually that takes a fair amount of time. But in any enterprise environment, the application changes constantly. So that means that when you are ready with your migration, uh, the application has changed and then you need to track those changes. And it also is always impossible to verify that the store procedures that you have converted, will they actually work? Because Oracle had things that makes it really hard to do automatically. The null handling is probably the one that is most confusing and it's almost impossible to get right. So there can be any place in the code if there is a if null test somewhere in the code and it's uh, only triggered once a year. That may break later because nobody can really test all these if else constructions. And we also try to do that every migration will be easier than the other one. So how do we do that? So first, looking a little bit about which database is easy. MariaDB is using ANSI SQL, and those databases who are using ANSI SQL are usually relatively easy to move to MariaDB as long as we support the features. So that means that because Postgres and MariaDB is ANSI, in many cases you can move easy to MariaDB as long as you haven't used Postgres extensions. Sybase DB2 are also, also ANSI, so those are relatively easy to do. SQL Server is almost ANSI, but they want to do something a little bit different, probably because they, they thought that this is a great way to get a lock-in, so they did that. So how do we do the migration? First, we analyze uh, what is the syntax and, uh, and capabilities you are using that MariaDB doesn't support. So we have, we have been working with a company called SQL Lines, who has a, a parser that you can run, and then you can ask the, uh, that, here's, the, here's my code, and uh, how compa that compatible this is to my SQL Postgres or MariaDB. We have ensured that SQL Lines is always 
almost always up to date with the latest MariaDB. So that, that means that you can, and we will work with the SQL lines to ensure that it's updated. Always when we add something new in compatible that uh, related to compatibility. So you run that, you get a list of things. And by, the, by running that on your dump. And you can also test that uh, dump with that. But uh, you get the list, then you start, uh, start to work with us to uh, create a set of, set, create Jira entries for all the uh, things that MariaDB doesn't support. And then we implement those. And, and deliver you a good. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to always talk about the next slides. So, regarding my 57, in practice, we are 99% compatible. In almost all cases, you can just replace my 57 with MariaDB. We early, earlier we had some cases where we, what we couldn't had hand, handle, for example, how JSON was stored, and uh, they, they had some other things that MySQL did a little bit different. Latest MariaDB, uh, then five and up, you should just, just be able to run upgrade, and basically everything should work. So we, we, uh, the only thing is that MySQL need, you have to, have to use MySQL native, native password because we don't support the MySQL ones because it's actually pretty in unsecure and uh, anybody who has access to a server can get all passwords in clear text, which we don't like. We probably we should add support for this also. That, that's something I need to discuss with Sergey. When it comes to the migration of Oracle, uh, we added in 10.4 uh, SQL mode Oracle that makes uh, MariaDB to look and feel like Oracle. And um, we did that by working together with uh, DBS, uh, one of the bigger bank banks in Asia. And we follow, we worked with SQL lines to first do everything. Then we made a list of every single feature that uh, we didn't support. And then we added support for that. We took about six months. And after that, DBS was able to migrate their biggest most complex application they had to MariaDB unchanged. And uh, no, at, up to date, they have migrated some 4,000 databases to MariaDB without any changes in the applications. At least that, that's what they've told us. So it was added in a version of the tree that we gave it gave it to DBS, but the, I think the changes was done in 10.4. Not so we did add a lot of things. I have the details about on the next slides. So packages was one of the bigger ones. And the nice thing with Oracle mode is that you can run the, the server in normal mode and Oracle mode. And in that mode, if you run Oracle mode, you can use all the Oracle syntax plus the MariaDB syntax that doesn't clash with Oracle. And with MariaDB mode, you, you can run normal. But you can switch the mode anytime if you have a stored procedure. It automatically switches to, to the mode for the stored procedure, procedure while running it and switching it back. So you can basically have stored procedures in PLS SQL and in, in the ANSIB and everything that's works. So here's a lot of slides that basically shows just what we did. I mean, just uh, quickly go through them without commenting. This just show what we were able to do within half a year with uh, two, two, basically two engineers, me and Alexander Bakov. So lots of changes to store functions, lots of extensions to cursors. Uh, we have loop and lots of these also works now in, in uh, ANSI mode except those that are in the specific Oracle style that is conflicting with us. There's lots of uh, variables are set and used a little bit different than in ANSI. Excuse me, is it new for MariaDB compared with the Oracle or 
How? What do you mean you this is the in ten ten three ten four? Compared to Oracle, or am I still in EU or? My, my school doesn't have this, anything of this. So uh, it's a kind of a strange fact that uh, MySQL has refused to add any Oracle features. I don't know if they are afraid that everybody would move from Oracle, Oracle uh, to Oracle MySQL and not having to pay licenses, but that may have an effect on that. And we also added the row type, which you can you can use in uh, in, in ANSI. And uh, for the next project, um, uh, we are doing some new integrations. Uh, Alexander Barr is working adding arrays, so that means we will have array support also in MariaDB as part of the migration project. So we had this, some new uh, SQL codes to be compatible. And we added, I have a row num, which is, uh, you don't really need the MariaDB, but if you need it, if you want to call from uh, Oracle. Exceptions is much more, more fully done in Oracle, but no, we haven't had that. The bit blocks begin and it's different. And then there are lots of simple syntax that just make migrations hard. You don't need to think about that. Intersect uh, was uh, done by Sanya, so he was helping on that part. We have added some functions uh, that uh, uh, Oracle is doing that we have something similar, but uh, we need to support what Oracle is doing other functions. And this is kind of a Strange things that they yeah, decided to that uh, things should work work with from uh, base zero instead of base one, and that can easily be a problem when you if you do automatic conversions. And uh, we don't support all types, but when you're looking at compatibility, most of the Oracle types can be. Uh, converted to MariaDB type that that's more or less the same. For example, C blob and, and, and blob. We have something that works more or less identical than Oracle. Packages was one of the things that we added last and, and uh, that was, has been a requirement from DBS. So we got it in and we are now extending pack packages for the next customer who wants some features in it that we don't support yet. So now, now handling is the, it's one of the interesting things. How many actually have been using Oracle here? One. Okay. Two, two brave persons. So, uh, so we in, a, in Oracle, and this is something that Oracle promised to fix probably some 10 years ago. They still haven't fixed it because this will break so many applications. So empty string and null is the same. That's basically it. So they basically, they, if you have null, or set something to now this put an empty string instead. But that also means it's really hard to in ANSI test if something is an empty string. Because it's not really empty string is now. So uh and so we had some try to find one way how to solve it without having so that the, the date on this could be different because we want to have that you can switch from Oracle mode to to MariaDB work, and the data would be the same. So what we come up with a hack that we thought that maybe this worked, and DBS seems to be very happy that this solves 99% of the problem with now. So basically we have a mode that's part of Oracle, but you can also use uh, separately that uh, empty strings now. And that means that if you set, if you uh, test empty string, it's now going to go true. And if you insert, an empty string. We actually insert the now, not an empty string, if in Oracle. So that means that things will be as you would expect in ANSI. And uh, uh, the problem with that, if we now have empty strings as nulls, what happens with concat? And then we fix that by having, doing like Oracle, that if you have empty string in con concat, or actually if you have null or empty string in concat, it's just ignored. 
and that means a null will be handled like ignore. Uh, sorry, uh, you mean if you concat an empty string with sounds and it's ignored? No, no, the, the, the null is ignored. So ah, you concat okay. empty string plus A, you get A. Yeah. If you concat concat concatenate null, yeah, empty string, you get A. Ah, but in order to okay, yes. So if you switch mode, it works like you would expect. But this actually solved most of this now problem. This is nice because it works everywhere. So what about the other direction? What if you compare empty string? If you compare a column to empty string? In that case, in, 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 uh, in not, because empty string, the column is not empty. Yeah. yeah. That's the bad thing about the other. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but if you, in this case, we be uh, you have to separate now and the, that, so that would fail. Oh, what the correct way? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, they they, they 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 didn't seem to do that. No. They used they used in Oracle. They just compared the null and that that works. Because empty string is not empty string is null. So in ten six we had Bocutech. They had some customers, so they added some. Uh, uh, New features, uh, uh, though not with uh, limit. And this is basically how um, Oracle does uh, handle li uh, limit queries in, in some sense. The problem is that this is uh, really, really hard to get uh, um, right because it actually, depending on how the optimizer fetches rows, and if you have a having and removes rows, it's really, really hard to get right. So that uh, I had to work, rework most of the Mokutech code to get it approximately like, like Oracle. But at least we are doing that better than anybody else as far as I in simulation. And that also something you can't, you can't convert something that uses row number in Oracle with an automatic tool. It's ab absolutely impossible because the way that they implemented is row number. So, uh, the, so in eleven four we have added some some new things and uh, um, for Oracle and uh, so until recently uh, in the beginning of this year we had didn't do some migrations from from Oracle because uh, the company was totally focused on. Let's work on SkySQL, not care about the migration. SkySQL is the future. That changed uh, early this year. So now we are back uh, out actively focusing on doing migrations. And with each migrations, all the new features will always be in the latest, uh, latest uh, development version. So you can expect a lot of new features. Uh, there is, uh, if you go to uh, MariaDB compatibility, the you go to databases in Jira, you will find about 80, Jira entries uh, that uh, that potential customers has filed, or we have worked with those, and we are working on a big group of those to add those in, the, in upcoming MariaDB release. So this is uh, just for one customer. And this is what we are working on just now. So this will be done probably early next year. And this, uh, if we have done this, then we basically have helped one company migrate. Some of the some of the more complex databases to MariaDB, and next migration for for them will be much easier because this will be supported. So actually, good in time. So migration from SQL Server. Uh, we haven't done a single one yet, uh, and that also because uh, of this that con concentrate on SkySQL thing. Um, SQL Server is most like Anderson, but still have some peculiarities. Like instead of using quotes, they are using braces for. And so we just to, to, to add something for SQL Server mode. We are, if you do this one, it works exactly like MariaDB, except that braces will be regarded as quotes for identifiers. And we just need one project to come to us and said, we need to move these things from SQL Server to MariaDB. 
and then we will add more things to this exactly like we did with Oracle. So this is the placeholder. So if you are in your, uh, you happen to have a big Oracle database or SQL Server database that uh, you want to replace with something that is uh, uh, open source, cheaper and faster, because you can run it with, with better hardware with less cost, uh, work with us and we will try to do it so you don't have to change your applications, which make the movement to MariaDB much cheaper than with any other solution that exists in open source today. Enterprise DB is doing this, they're doing a great job, but they are not open source. So if uh, you want to have a, have a login, then you can use them to attempt it. But we are the other alternative and the only alternative in the open source world. So we started the project with DBS 2007, and within four years, they had migrated 80% on of their all applications from Oracle to MariaDB. And what? Uh, um, why it have, have taken four years? Why so long? Four thousand applications. Uh, it, it, uh, each application does take some time. So they, I think that they moved some hundred in, in one year. So that's one application every three, third day. Third day. Do how many commits do you do of full full features in three days? So that is this is actually astonishing rate. And they also have to usually they they do a testing several months for everyone to to see that. Does it work? And they have a, a testing testing environment and a testing department. I think that the testing department was totally overloaded. But uh, we did we didn't have to add after this initial ass assessment. They didn't come up and ask for a single Oracle feature for uh, for doing the migrations. They did come up and ask. There was most queries was. Notable faster in MariaDB. There were a few queries, something like the range of 10, between 10 and 20, that we had to uh, look at with opt and fix something in Optimizer. But everything else worked. And the common question was not so, what's the problem with MariaDB? The common question was, why are you so much faster than, than, than than Oracle, which I didn't expect because Oracle is a great database, but I also suspect that they also uh, was uh, able to improve the hardware when running MariaDB, because with Oracle, you don't want to improve the hardware because if you add a, a better CPU with more threads, you pay more. So most customers running uh, with Oracle running on real, real old hardware because they can't afford to upgrade with MariaDB, nothing, no such And uh, I visit DBS a couple of times a year to see everything works because they, they are a great customer that comes with a lot of new ideas of what we can improve with MariaDB. And I want to do that with all other migrations and other, other customers to improve MariaDB because I believe that the customers knows more about us of how the database should, should be used in the future and what improvements they would see be most fitting in the database. So I love to work with customers, and I think that customer-driven development is one of the best way for, at least for database company, and for, for most other ones. So they are using uh, MariaDB Enterprise uh, uh, for all applications because they really love the fact that uh, it has the longest support cycle, so they don't have to upgrade so often. They also use a max scale, and they are not using Galera. Galera is used by, I would say, almost half of the customers of MariaDB Corporation. But uh, yeah, DBS is, likes the master slave and the special master delayed slave. So they, they have it in, in very critical applications. They have one master slave and then they have a delayed slave that is uh, some hours after them. The master. So if somebody goes and drops a table, they don't have to 
start screaming, they just go to the slave and, and get back. Uh, they, they, uh, they were the one who suggested that uh, we should have a street, a street storage engine, which I de developed for them, which is a great far coming. And the, the re reason they needed that was that uh, storage, they are really expensive storage and fast storage. It also means that having a lots of old data there will cost them a lot because they can't use that for that things. So they, so the cheapest possible storage they have is S3. Whereas, and uh, so I did that, and this is for archiving. So I did a S3 engine that stores everything in compressed format and it's uh, written in huge blocks and read in huge blocks, which actually makes it as fast as, as in a DB for practical purposes. And they asked me, so why is it so fast? Because I can cheat. In the DB, spending a lot of time handling transactions and uh, concurrency with S3, with S3 only, I can skip all that. So after the initial read, S3 is much faster than anything else because we are cheating. And they use max scale. And uh, looking at the uh, Marie DB uses in general in DBS, the biggest problem they are facing is that uh, every eight year they have to do an upgrade to a new version. And the uh, upgrade process for them is that they do half a year of validation to see that will there be any problems. And uh, we are trying to help them make that process much faster. And we have done that by adding features in max scale so we can, uh, we can do Multiplexing, which I what I call, but that's the diff router. We also have workload and, and replay functionality that allows them to do two things. They can uh, put if they have a they're running ten six. So if they're running a, the six slave and an eleven four slave, Maxcale can send all queries that go to slave to both the old one and new one, compare the result and the timing, and they do a report that how does well does the new version work. So they can probably, by doing this, uh, decrease this testing to a fraction of the time. And, we, and they can, what they can also can do is that uh, they capture all the work to master it in a file, and then we can replay that against uh, another server, either an old one or a new one, and uh, see that how things will perform. That actually is a really good way to also find bugs. If you ever have a performance bug and, and we can get the work to capture, we can run that against an old server, new server, and compare and find out what is not working. And we're, this is in the latest max scale. I'm really looking forward to see that in, in production. So what we're gonna do in the future, we are trying to do even more, a mice more compatible, and uh, and make it easier to move from MySQL eight and nine to MariaDB. So we have a we have a working on a config tool, and it's actually ready. Just waiting for my review, so you can check that your config files will work for both MySQL and MariaDB. Uh, we did a tool to check the syntax. That, and this will also be very good for doing integrations. And we also need to add uh, lateral tables. So uh, that's something of Sanya. He has been working very busy for that on, for years. At least I had it yeah, been on on you on for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, we, need, we need to have that because that's uh, a very requested feature. And we also need uh, a sharp uh, plugin to be able to handle MySQL password, just to make it easier to move. Uh, recently, we had uh, some users who wanted to move from Percorner server to MariaDB. Percorner server have, have added a lot of small, nice features that they were depending on. So most of those is now added in 11.4. And that has just yes, adding flexibility and more. Most things is about uh, more statistics. And, uh, and I have also enhanced uh, the knowledge base to 
so that uh, adding step-by-step -step instructions if you want to go for MySQL uh, or MySQL application cluster or Pracona to MariaDB. So you are basically do this, do this, do this, this. So very trivial. Your grandma, grandmother could move from Pracona or MySQL to MariaDB. And the uh, rest is step-by-step uh, -step instructions uh, for MySQL to MariaDB. Basically what you have to do. And because the time is up, I'm just showing it so that you get the idea of what, what to do. And this should cover everything that you need to do, including uh, changing the use of MariaDB GTID last checks and because MariaDB is a little bit different than MySQL and uh, that we have more options so these are basically the config things that you should add to get optimal MariaDB usage that would be that's kind of it and the config tool will be able to do this automatically I just need to review it so that is uh, we don't have time for question except if Kai gives uh, permission the MariaDB Foundation is the global contact point for collaboration on MariaDB Server. Our work is made possible thanks to the support of our sponsors.